Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 35 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Tal Tal. We pick things back up from turn 67 on the autumn season of 203. And we have a few things to take care of right off the bat. We are going to wipe out Huang Tu. We're going to push away Yuan Shao's invasion into the Central Plains. And we're also going to turn Gong Sun Xu, who is the son of Gong Sun Zan, who is invading us. And we're going to flip this whole army. And that's probably the most interesting thing we have done so far in this campaign. So we're going to start here. Uh, we're going to go into Undercover Network, go to him. And we're going to go towards the army tab or the general tab. And there is military revolt, which is what will give us control of this army and the retinue. And that will flip him to our side. And we have to select him. And it should cost a little extra. I kind of forgot what the defensive measures he has. If it's too high, we would have to cancel. That would be kind of bad. But hopefully we can overcome that. We have excess points over here by 24 seven points here is a little low but we can't wait any longer because he's about to invade us and the worst scenario would be getting him killed by discovering him as our spy and that's also kind of okay as well okay so there is actually no defensive measure against undercover network and we can simply pay 11 more here for cover to make this work and that has happened and let's pop down in here and you can see now this army is controlled by us the other two generals are summoned back uh, we don't get them we only get what he has in his retinue now the retinue is not that great and as a character he brings us a lot of items which is excellent uh, we pretty much get five items here uh, which is lovely he is the heir and he was the son. You can see his stat boost is quite interesting. It's 30 points, but there is a minus 10 resolve, but plus 40 points in other aspect. He can make for a decent commander because his personal traits plus 8 military supplies and plus 2 morale in enemy territory when commanding are both only going to be active when he's on the battlefield. So we might save him for that, but at this point, what I'm going to do with him is just simply take away everything he has and put him in our bench. We're not going to get rid of him. We are going to save him and keep him and use him. It's just that I want to clean out his items real quick and let him chill for a little bit. Now he shouldn't feel any anger towards us. We recently hired, that's 20 points. That should last us a little bit. Recently demoted from air, I guess. Minus 36 desire for court position. Okay, so nothing too crazy. In terms of his skill tree, he's actually suggesting that he could be a decent administrator just from the two skills that are already active, even though I don't think any of the traits support that. So I think he's better off as a general. We'll just pick up Tenacity of Steel whenever he does rank up. Uh, but right now, we can't get rid of the retinue. I don't want to pay for the upkeep. And recall him. And that takes away the threat that was going to attack the temple from um, Peng Cheng, and we want to keep that temple in our control because it does provide us the satisfaction we need. We have this army coming down. Uh, we'll take care of it a bit later. We have this army who just retook Chen at the end of last part. They'll go meet them. They can't move very far. Um, you can see they can siege us, but that's also on March. I don't know if they can actually reach us if they take that away, but regardless, we're ready to fight them. This army can show out over here. Let's officially declare war. I don't know if we'll get hit with a... Okay, so we're not going to get hit with untrustworthiness. I guess we waited long enough because uh, we cycled the two armies. That army was supposed to attack, but we had to rush that one home. He has an army here. Small one, but I think there's still an army. We cannot reach? You gotta be kidding me. This... Reduce movement when you load is definitely very annoying. Alright, so I guess we have to take that next turn. Um, it's going to slow us down a little bit. Over here, I know we can definitely reach there. So here is the question where what do we want to move after the fight? Because what I mean here is I can move this army, say, here. Actually, we can move this up. And you see that we don't have the reinforcement, we can't beat it, of course. Starve out. 
Once you have a settlement on siege, they lose their circle of influence. Uh, we can move up as close as we want. Ideally, we want to invade this way. So we could sell out from the port as well. Let's just move up a little bit here. We'll let the three generals take it. We'll delegate here. That way this army can still move farther up. There's a crossing right there. Occupy. They can rest up for a turn. We're going to upgrade this. That's fine. And this army we can still move or else we couldn't. Now they are slightly injured but not a big deal. I think we just pop in right... We could... Hmm. Let's go here. We'll land in the north next turn after the heal. They'll follow behind. They'll probably take two turns, so they'll lag behind for a turn. We could just recall her for the heal. It'll be faster because she's going to take more than one turn. I guess that'd be same for him. All right, perfect. Don't have to worry too much about that. Unfortunate, we can't actually take. Actually, we can. We can. We can make this work. Because it's going to be a delegate fight anyways. So this is a city. All we need to do is shuffle two generals. So let's utilize our son. Let's summon Guo Si first. Summon our son after. Recall the first general. Drag our son to attack. We'll be reinforcing him. And now we can delegate for the win. There we go. Now we don't have to slow down. Perfect. We caught their general. Now does she have items? A bow, but it's the most common one. I don't need her. Yeah, I don't need her. We'll just release for extra money. She is gonna live because she has resiliency, but then the faction is gonna be destroyed. She might come into our recruitment roster. Our son ranked up. Good for him. He picked up a lot of experience by leading that fictional army. Uh, we do have this farmland captured. Now, I don't think we need to make this one... I guess we could. It does give the discount to this upgrade. You produce less food, but you get local replenishment from grain. So we'll be replenishing extra if we're in Jiangxia. And we might actually be in Jiangxia for a while because we do want to come over here and attack Changsha in the future. Alright, let's get it converted. Why not? Alright, our son picked up a rank. We will grab him Guile and he'll come over. Oh, he had ranked up twice in one battle. Excellent. Now, is he... Uh, he's probably a battlefield commander. We'll continue the top row. Alright, he can go back. He did his job. I don't want to take up too many army limits. Uh, we have up to 9 right now. And this army can now shift up as well. Alright, so resolve both of those matters. Uh, out of this huge list of things, let's see, some new items. Most importantly here, we have new characters. Ooh, Fa Zheng. So I know Fa Zheng is also a semi-unique, thir uh, 30 points here. Pretty decent character. We'll grab him. He's also very young. And we'll also take a look at everyone's traits starting with him. So Fa Zhong doesn't have Burnt. Let's see if anyone else have Burnt. Nope. Um, let's see if anyone has items. Okay, so we'll just grab him. Get us another strategist and we're good to go uh, in terms of that. But there's a lot of things to do. Buildings. Nayang broke a million population finally so that we can have a second building slot. But everything is capped by reform so there's nothing to build. We could upgrade the commandery some more. The main benefit here is the passive boost to some peasantry income and also percentage boost to commerce. So it will help our income a little bit. It will also increase our garrison quality, but it will consume about 10 more food, which is not a big price to pay considering 
how well off we are. And this is going to eventually be our capital. So let's just keep pushing it. Why not, right? All right, because it costs 6,000 and we can't build anything else. So let's wait on that. Because there's other commanderies, especially ones with corruption reduction that needs to happen. We're going to focus on those first. Now, oh, this is also over 1 million. We can convert a couple of these. So I would probably just want to maximize food production here. So we'll go with this variant. Although there's so about land or oh, government support buildings. These two ultimate versions, one is 100% food, 100% peasantry. One's 150% food, 50% peasantry. There's a main difference. This you can build. Look over here. Doesn't say it requires the settlement to be any level. You need a reform. But over here, your settlement must be a small regional city. So we have no intention of ever ranking this up. So it's better to go for this route, even though it'd be less food and more income, which doesn't hurt us. It's just we can't get this one. We can get this one. You don't need small regional city to get the level four. Uh, but what you would need to get, you end up getting 135. Why not get 100, 100? I guess because of that logic, we're going over here. We can't convert that but that building by itself is not that bad let's see don't high is fine we'll be annexing a little bit once those eight turns whatever amount is left uh ends and speaking of little bit we have two of his spies um, which we can utilize to try to kick out some of his characters now the goal here is to kick out some of his generals so that he can summon more armies because we can guarantee the army to come over to us part of the annex. If they're on the bench, they might just leave. I think there's a couple ways to do this. So I know I can get her fired. So let's start with her. Because the less character he has, he has only one army on the field. I'm sure the AI will summon some. So that way we just make sure the ones he summoned will be the good characters. Because I don't think I can kick any of these off. Because we can only get 30 point deduction now. 39. It's close, but it's not enough. Yeah, so that's probably the best move, and then we'll save some points. Um, there's not much he can do either. Any new turn quotes? Huh. Zhang Yang's faction. We're about to fight him. Oh, Cheng Yu. Let's get another spy, because we just turned the sun. So we don't have a spy in his faction anymore. Flip some points. Now we know it's plus 11, which is a little annoying, but most characters have good cover growth. He does not, unfortunately. He leads the army in Trun. So he's the army right here. Or maybe not in Trun. Wait, he's still in his own territory? I thought he was in this army, but maybe not, because in Trun feels like he's somewhere in here. Maybe there's another stack behind. Maybe we'll save up enough points to do that, but it seems like undercover is going to grow slowly. We need at least 61 and 40. So we're looking at four more turns exactly, and then we can flip his army too. That wouldn't be half bad. Yeah, he's in a different army. So, oh, this is also not Gongsun Zan's army, right? So Gongsun has another army over here, but it's fine. Our armies are coming around. We should be able to handle everyone. He also wants a peace deal now, now that we flipped his son. Tragedy has struck. Yuan Shao also really wants a peace deal. Yuan Shu wants a peace deal. Okay, so... We made the decision to beat them, fight them. This army will fight them. And we'll also fight them, because we want that capital. So we need to sail down and grab it. That's part of our challenge. Um, so we're not piecing out with anyone. Shizhia wants a non-aggression pack. Mm, don't really care about that. Okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, we still have plenty of cash left. Because it feels like we didn't have to build anything. Therefore, we can go back and actually build that palace building that we held back. Or large regional city. Not necessarily a palace here. Okay, population's the main cause. I don't think we're actually taxing anyone, so that's no problem. We just need the army to farm rebels from, um, you know, growing discontent in Huainan. 
that's the only place that has a lot of issues, I think. Yeah, that's the only place. Okay, we're good to go. Let's continue. Alright, so it turns out that army... Ooh, the Nye Bestelment. This is usually what happens right before you take over as the Emperor yourself. Uh, so basically, they're Nye Gifts. Uh, a representation of your power and greatness. You know, it's like what level of wagons and horses you can use, what type of clothes you can wear, what type of guards you can use, what music plays when you are, you know, announced to the court, what type of ramp do you use, and such. So just show status. And most regents who get the night beast element, uh, usually given to themselves, is a sign that they're ready to become emperor. Um, but Cao Cao never usurped himself, so. We're fine. Liu Bei promoted some generals, that's good. Hopefully including some that we want. Uh, we've seen him already. And he's Liu Bei's general who we just kicked out last turn. We don't need her. I just kicked her out to make sure she didn't get promoted to generalship. And it turns out this army that we put a spy in is actually Gong Sun Zan's personal army. That's actually very interesting. So we'll be fighting them. No big deal. Over here, Gong Sunan also has an army has landed. Interesting. He has some very strange army situation. So here we want to first recruit back our two burned officers who we summon back to heal. I believe it's Guan, yeah, Guan Zhenping and Yu Yong. And then over here we can summon another burned officer corp that we recall for safety reasons. They can come back, and that one's led by her. And who else is Burn Officer that can join them? She's not Burn, she just has good bandit traits. Maybe we don't have that many Burn Officers left. Right, I don't think we have another three. I think we placed everyone in the other army. Okay, that's fine. I think she comes out just because she's very useful with her poison volley. And then... Huh. Maybe Yu Jin just gets some more experience. He's been doing great for us. The duel outside of our capital. He killed three men. Very, very strong. I don't know if we want to go attack him. We could ambush. And then place them inside as a bait. See if they walk over. And then we can catch them in the ambush with the garrison. Fight them. Not a bad setup. That will be our future fourth army. I don't have any threats down here, right? I don't think so. The only thing that's happening down south is that Yan Baihu and Huang Gai was duking it out. Oh, maybe he won. Oh no. Well, they they were fighting. There was I think Huang Gai's army was here. Did he beat him? I'm not sure if he actually beat him. But they're fighting on our territory. That's fine. Uh, I don't want him to actually, you know, win here. If he gets wiped, he might join us. That's actually pretty good. Um, outside of that, I think the only fight we have this turn is over here. They're delaying our invasion to the north. And it's really not worth actually fighting. She won't die because of the resiliency. He could die, but he's just an academic. So we'll just delegate this. Oh, they didn't even get wiped. Okay. We have to chase them, which I don't mind. Uh, no movement? Well, they got you covered. Now the other general will die because he has no resiliency, and then she will get summoned back to their court. Unless we capture her. Yeah, he's dead. We caught her. She's the administrator of Yobei Ping with a pretty okay retinue, just because the White Horse Raider exists here. Energetic's pretty good. Should we use her? 
There's no items. Traits is okay. I'm just gonna release. We don't really need her. Alright, we're obviously gonna go towards Pingyuan next, but they have no movement and we could use the turn to heal. We set up the trap on this side. They're trying their best to get closer to the battlefield. I guess now it's all about management. Huayinan has a bunch of build orders, also a bunch of population issues. We need to find some generals for them to fight off their rebels. It's mainly because the population growing very fast and you see the negative factors from population. This is based on the raw number. So the higher the raw number is, the worse it's going to be. And the reason why we're growing so fast is we have a high resolve officer in a four county commandery. So the resolve population growth is given to each of the counties and you can see that we're getting 44k from administrator. So that's 11k at each of the counties. And the public order is dropping it by 32k and then 8k from the construction building and yet we're still getting 10k growth per turn. That's quite nice and the high population gives us extra income, extra replenishment and all sorts of different bonuses as well as this penalty. Not gonna worry too much about that. Chen is good, Peng Cheng is fine. Feels like we're approaching full build here pretty much everywhere. Yeah, that's an okay build once we get that back. Okay, so we're done with the building stuff. Huh. She on cooldown again? Oh, he shuffled his arm? Whoa. He recalled her. She's now heir? What? What happened to Tianyong? Tianyong left. T he, I mean, Liu Bei wasn't fighting any wars. Tianyong had an army here, but like, he's gone now. Well, that is really weird. He switched heirs. I mean, it's a smart move. She's a better heir, but Dian Yong's just now unhappy and gone. And in the future, we can do this. We can assassinate Liu Bei if we want. Um, okay. I'm pretty happy about the fact that she's now heir. Uh, let's see what else we can do. So he's in the army. I don't want... Oh, he didn't summon any of the valuable generals. That is not good. I can give him a ton of cash. Because I think that might be what's holding him back from summoning armies. I could be wrong though. Marriage into a ruling family. Hmm. We can't make anyone else leave. Because they got a character who has high satisfaction, a uh, high authority, therefore high satisfaction. Huh, what can we do? He's leading an army. He's also leading a uh, a commandery. We can actually surrender the territory to us, but I don't need that either. He controls what? Dong, Donghai. Wait, wait, wait. I can't. I can't actually make sure of that because he's he's in Donghai. So I'm assuming he controls. He can't have Donghai because we have the actual commander. We can check here. Administrator of what? Oh my god, I cannot check. Well, it could be Dong Lai. It could also be Dong. Dong is actually really good. But Dong Lai... Dong Lai is not bad. Dong Lai is a really good food commandery. And regardless, this is Liu Bei's army. How much money does he actually have? Uh, let's look at his payment to know. 4,000. Uh, what do we want to do with him? Um... Oh, Domian lost uh, his capital under siege or something. He lost a port. He can't trade with us. That's a waste of a slot. How many more turns do we need? Six more turns. Okay. I could just give him a bunch of cash. Alright, let's do it. Summon Guan Yu onto the field. Is that perfectly 5.0? Oh wow, that's actually 
Not bad. Here, take a gift. Alright. And then diplomatically. Oh, now everyone's scared. Golson's on Steven's scared. Um No, I don't want peace. I want to fight. Liu Bell wants a non-aggression pack. All right, let's just continue. Oh, our ambush worked. He fell into an ambush. And I think this might be the first ambush battle we had. Yeah, I think this is the first ambush battle we have on this tutorial series. So let me describe ambush real quick. If we take a look at a map, ambush maps are always the same setup. So there is a narrow passage surrounded by trees and the AI is moving from one direction to the other. Now you could be caught in ambush too and then you will be the faction in the middle. You cannot deploy in the middle. You are a single file marching. And there is a zone at the end of the trail that is called a retreating zone. You can run in there to retreat off the field. As the attacking army or the ambushing army, you can deploy anywhere you want on the map except for on the trail. And you can place your units in the trees to hide and deal damage to them as they run. So that's your advantage. Now, I don't usually like ambush fights. Uh, it used to be you can't have auto fire, but they fixed that. So now it works well, but I haven't had a lot of experience playing ambush fight is what I'm trying to say. Regardless, we will do fine. Uh, reinforcements are not worth it in ambush fight. It will take exactly three minutes, I believe, or five minutes, 300 seconds or three minutes. I forgot which one it is, but it will take that long for that reinforcement to arrive on the battlefield. And that's simply too long in a lot of ambush fight. So I'm gonna actually take the night battle. So we'll trade away this group and this group so that we can get the 15 points of morale on the enemy. Now, Gong Sun Zan is not weak. Gong Sun Zan is a very strong general with a very, very strong weapon. And he's boosting it even more by giving himself a flying dagger. So we have to be very careful. I don't know if our generals can actually beat him in a duel. So we might have to once again rely on our cavalry with the high charge to go through him and erase him from the map. We have a spy here, but there was no option to extract him. So we pretty much can't do much. There's a 100% chance of capture, which is great. Uh, so we'll get to extract him post battle. Don't kill him on the field. He has no resiliency. He has resiliency. He has decent weapon. He's their Grand Commandant, extremely old. So I'm not even interested in capturing him. But that's clearly a mistake. That is not his retinue. His retinue is right here, not this. Um, but yeah, we'll fight this out. Let's jump in here. Alrighty, so we're loaded up into the ambush fight. You can see what I'm talking about. They have a trail. It's a snowy day. Very nice. And they're marching. This is where their general's hiding, or headed towards, not hiding. And there should be a zone here, which is their escape zone. Now, that's usually the case. In this case, I don't even see one. Maybe the AI is not escaping. And what I'm going to do with this battle... Hmm, let me decide. There's a lot of ways to fight this. I like to fight with my range weapons. So I think what I'm going to do, I could just block their way. I don't like the trees. It's not helping us. They have a juggernaut. They start lighting it up. It's going to murder tons of our troops. If I just sit our trebuchets way back here, right, we can open up on their front. They have to try to close this gap, which I don't think they can. Like, they have no cavalry in the front. This doesn't count. This is not a charging cavalry. They have a couple back here. But they're not really going to get here in time, nor do they have a lot of range. We can even get more aggressive. Like, we can probably go here. And we just have to turn on fire will before we start. Yeah, let's do that. Let's be very in their face about this. And I don't know if we need more fire arrows. Uh, we don't need all of them for sure. Maybe one of them can be fire arrows. 
I'm not gonna manually control anyone because I might have to go on the fly here. We'll take a formation. Or maybe we circle just to stall. There's not a lot of range coming back, nor are there a lot of cavalry. Like the thing with circle is like if I place one right here, they can't really fit through that gap. So they will get drawn into combat and they can't move forward anymore. So it's a really good space occupier and we haven't utilized it at all. So we might as well showcase it here. And we obviously run the risk of their general just flying through, but I can't control him anyways, no matter what formation we take. I think this is fine. Let's make sure that no one can touch our range. Now, obviously this is excessive. I don't even know why we have to do it this way. It doesn't give us a lot of benefits, but it gives you stat boost, uh, melee evasion, charge resistance. It decreased our melee attack rate, but I believe 10% melee evasion, 25% melee evasion. Yeah, it's a stalling tactic. Mm, spear walls, maybe spear walls just straight up better. All right, we're gonna do spear walls. We're also gonna be moving them a little bit here. Okay, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Kinda like that, except for a little bit more forward. Basically, I want little gaps to maximize their usage. Maybe it's a little bit too wide. There we go. And then these boys are just gonna loosely guard the flank in case the cavalry make a run for it. And then we can hide some of our cavalry. So do they have any really strong range? Not really. Those crossbow are never gonna get to the front. So these cavalry are really designed to just crush the general. Everything I want to kill is right here. So. No mercy. No need to hide in the trees. Wedge formation. Their job is to assassinate Gong Sun Zan right off the bat. Hmm. Huh. He can show in the back. No dueling. I might want him to duel him. Alright. Let's call these guys too. I might manual fire. We're ready. Let's go! Get that duel started. Where are you going? And look at his health. Oh, we're converting our own guys, but it's okay. We got him. Alright, break away, break away. We took a lot of loss because of the <laughs> friendly fire. We chase him down. Boost ourselves. Alright, he's done. Now we get out. Take a break. Let the range take care of everything else. And fire on those crossbow units. Problem is, how is Dan going to get out once he wins the duel? Alright, we're going to help Dan Wei out over here a little bit. Because the Onyx Dragon is definitely not going to let anything close. There's a cavalry here. Get away from our duel.
Where's his horse? Ah, oh, it's right here. Okay, it's close. It's close. After we win, we can get onto it. Alright, clear it over here. Oh, we murdered him. I didn't get to see it, but... Ah, uh, they have a elite cataphract unit here. Get on the horse. Alright, danger close. Alright, we routed the cavalry. We routed everything in the front too. Um, time to unleash on these guys. Stop firing real quick. I'm trying to fight back, how cute. Alright, they got crossbow damage. Okay, we're gonna go unbreakable. Just break formation, there's no need. Get this one, we'll get this one. We'll split a couple over. Oh, there's one right here. Who do you guys think you are, Spearman? Oh, they have some cavalry hiding in here too. Alright, it's okay. We're elite cavalrys for a reason. Anything else? I think we're good. Very clean fight, except for the poor cavalrys who took a lot of friendly fire, but the price needs to be paid to get rid of Gongsunzan fast. Alrighty. Gongsunzan goes down. Hopefully, we get his weapon. There's a chance he could drop it. Oh, we got something. Uh, mathematician. We can extract him, and we should, or else I think he will die. Um, he's very old already, but he is a semi unique character, too. Uh, ruthless Pragmatis, um, 30 points, minus population growth if he is administrator, but if he is a Prime Minister, Heir, or Faction Leader, plus 4 food, nothing special. And I don't think he has burned or anything. I guess he can come to us for the retirement home treatment. What What is this unit? I think it's like melee cavalry or something. Yeah, we'll take him. Mm, or just let him continue to be a spy. Yeah, why not? Alright, we caught him. Also super old. What is with all these old generals? He has two items. We can get both if we recruit him and then fire him. Sounds like a plan. We'll take money. We didn't get anything from Gong Sun Zan though, so that's a little sad. Gaogan really wants that non-aggression pack. Not now. Alrighty, so let's see. New turn. We have Yuan Shao's army coming over here. So you really should defect to us, shouldn't you? History demands it. Um, Wong Sun Zan's on cooldown, our spies leading it. We don't have to crush them. And we ranked up. Wonderful. He can pick up his unique skill, Cry of the Forest. Gives him 6 times damage and terror once he's below 20% health. Very strong. Uh, let's take that. And I'm going to swap these. I'm going to shift one army down south. Uh, the reason is I'm expecting a future army from Liu Zhang sailing down in the future and they can recruit an army whenever that happens. Uh, meanwhile, we have plenty of armed forces on this side. We are hoping to go through Liu Dai to fight Yuan Shu. So I guess we'll all go this way. Now, how do we just ignore this army? We could try to peace out. I'm sure Gong Sun Zan is very easy to talk to at this point. Yeah, 41.2. Now, he's not gonna want to be vassalized. Oh, I am wrong. I am wrong here. Okay. 
This is a very interesting campaign. Um, let's see, 1.5 to, let's see when it stops. Going at 0.5 rate. Okay, right before we are we are we need it, but it's fine. One point is perfect for a regular auxiliary, and we have plenty of regular ones. Oh, we got a tax collector. Well, that's actually useful. I thought it was mathematician. This we can put it on one of our administrators. We can give them um, not anti-spying. Anti-spying might hurt us. Let's just give him a devious attendant. That'd be perfect. He's going to be our vassal. <laughs> And we have to negotiate some peace deals for them. This agrees. Zheng Jiang agrees. Okay. Perfect. So, now we are very powerful. Now, you might be thinking we can take both uh, by annexing them. Sure. There's an annex cooldown. So, after you annex one, there's a certain amount of period of time. I think it's pretty long, actually. Maybe close to 20 turns before you can annex a second faction. And the second you annex one faction, your other vassals will tense up and uh, be really careful about you. Um, so we have to be careful which order we do things. I think we still get Liu Bei first. There's no reason why not. Uh, we gifted him some money. Actually, we can. We have to check through here. Let's do that later. Uh, we still want to do all the fighting first. There's plenty of fightings left. Um, we can't sail across because we keep getting attacked. They're in a weird position where we can't reach them. This is a level 3 city. Okay, so what I want to do here is lay ambush with this army. At level 3 city, the advantage is we can loop forever. Oh, we got it wrong. Oh well, it will still work. I wanted to ambush this army and then have them come over here and defend it. But we messed that up. But I can still fix it. But instead of ambush, we just sit there to make them scared. And that's fine. That's a good setup. Over here, since now they are our friend, our vassal, we don't have to do much to them. We can go and attack Grandchild's army. Now, clearly, they're going to take offense to our trespassing to fight in their territory, but... Let's see, how long till we can declare war? If it doesn't warn us, we just declare war right away. Okay. It's been more than five turns. And that's exactly what we want, so no regrets there. Now we're not trespassing. Pop them into the opponent's territory. They can't reach. We attack. Yo, that's sitting right here. They might run. Yep. I don't know if we can chase. Nope, can't catch. Okay. No one's healing, right? Then we're marching. Okay, so now I think all our armies have moved. Yep. Let's take care of some of the buildings. Why none's gonna need an army or three generals on the field? Wait, I think we didn't fire the person I wanted to fire. Yeah. But we just got him, so I guess not too much of a delay. He's just so old. Alright, we'll take away both of his items. And we're gonna say goodbye to him. Alright, so we're gonna summon our son. Gong Sun Zan's son. And our cousin. Alright, they can chill here, farm rebels for a little bit. Alright, corruption reduction. We have two builds here? No, we don't. Okay. Alright, let's 
let's pick a new reform. We decided to go this route, moving up to get to level 5 state workshop and level 5 copper mine. So let's continue this route. This gives us 10% to all income, which is basically 10% to our overall income over here. Very helpful. We should give the tax collector to someone who is the administrator of... That's population growth. Industry income, build time. Okay, so we're really not building anything here anymore. So there is a sizable amount of peasantry income in Huainan, given there's a livestock farm. So we're going to swap that over. Yeah, we don't have much for you. I guess we could increase resolve. Since we're not building anything in... Guangling anymore, this will help with population growth, and I don't mind losing some of the construction cost elements. Yeah, why not? Pick up an expertise horse. Pick up some more expertise. All right, let's pick up some more expertise on him. And Jashu, basically our strategist who has armies should pick up the horse. Oh, well, let's Xun get it then. But his default horse is actually authority horse. This way it increases cunning. Okay, building's done, general's done. Diplomacy's gone pretty well. Let's see. He's not summoning the right guys. And we can't do anything to force him to utilize them. And everyone is all of a sudden very happy in the faction. So I guess we can't do much. Oh, she's heir. We can't improve relationship even more, but it doesn't do much at this point because we're just waiting for turns. I guess we'll just empower trade. That's the only thing that can give us some tangible rewards. Nobody is stepping up the defense here. Same thing here. A little bit different here. All right, we can force some of them to actually leave. Zhao Yun stuck on the bench. Wasting away. We'll try to get him in the annex. Huang Zhu has jumped ship and joined them and is part of the family. Interesting. She's now heir. Let's make her leave. Just because we can. I think it's plus 12. Or 11. That should be fine. Plus 11. Okay. Alright, we're good. Yeah, they're fighting. Ooh, Yan Baihu's army lost. So they're really weak right now. Which means... Ah, uh, he still doesn't want to back down. Well, I can't save you. You're going to get wiped. Maybe join us. I could I could gamble that they're going to get wiped. Right? He doesn't like us this much right now, but if I want him to potentially join me in the future... Oh, one person who got killed had this item. Right, let's trade for it before it goes, goes away to waste. Um, We have a bunch of good stuff that we haven't been using. This is actually not good. Those are okay. These are okay. That is pretty trash. And then we'll promise him per turn payment, hoping that he will get wiped next turn. Risky move. But we're not promising him that much. 
375. Oh, 370. Not greedy at all. We'll get the silver item. What if I give him a couple free points? And you give him like five free points for him to like us? Yeah, that's not happening. All right, we're just gonna take the item. And hopefully we only have to pay him like 370 once or twice. Okay. All right, now we're good. Um, I almost want to give Liu Bei another 5,000. See, he has money. Summon your army. What are you doing? You'll like us more. I mean, it's not going to bring us anything. We're annexing him later anyways. Uh, all right, I'm not paying him. He doesn't need the money. He's he's just not summoning armies. Not because he's poor. He has the money to do it. All right, don't care. Oh, Gong Sun Du also might want to be our vassal. He's all the way in this corner. 40 points. So it's probably going to require like a war, beat him down. But I don't know if I need him. I can just take that land myself. Anyhow, uh, let's continue. Oh, they had night battle. They think they're so fancy chasing our three units around. We'll retreat them. Yuan Shu wants peace. No, you can go die. All right, Meng Huo signed a peace deal. And um, the south is getting busy. Tao Ran Lady Mi has a kid. Tao Pi Gu. Which means butt. That is a terrible name to give to your kid. I mean, you can make it sound better with different tones. Like, Pi Gu. It's still terrible. What What's going on over here? Uh, can't wait to see the characters once you come of age. Um, let's see. I like cutting. More cutting is higher. Well, cutting and cutting stat is higher for ammo. So she's the general who we convince to leave. I think it's usually when you convince them to leave through the spying dissatisfied discredit, they always join your pool. Um, I had no intention of recruiting her. It's just that she conveniently had less points, so we uh, made sure she left. Yeah, they try to come here and pick on our guys, so we're going to return the favor. Now, I can't reach her now, can I? She's stuck between our two armies. I'm going to use those three generals to fight them. They're going to run, and then we chase with them, and then we wipe them. Too bad, too bad we can't drag this army in as well, but it's okay. I will fight this to get a clean fight. Uh, the weakness of Yuan Shao's army is his special unit has no shield. So we're going to tear into them pretty easily with our range. Um, I think we can do night battle. I think the purpose of this group was just for the burn debuff. Well, actually, no. These are generals that we can actually use. But it would be a lot easier if we do the night battle. The penalty to morale really helps. Yeah, we don't need the three generals. Let's just fight this. Alrighty, very dark night here. Uh, lots of trees, wonderful. Um, pretty flat map, not really going to be an issue. Obviously, fire will be very helpful here. Oh, we didn't grab both of them. Did the second one get fire? Okay, so both of them have fire now. We can activate this to see the forest, to see their units inside the forest. So that's going to help us spot them. Um, might as well just go all fire theme here because there's a lot of trees we can get some nice flame going mm, maybe a little bit higher here there we go and I don't even think the cavalry need to do much this battle they can just chill it's gonna be a lot of fire and friendly fire and whatnot. How many seconds is the forest body? 180 seconds. That's enough. 
This way, when they're inside the forest, we can still see them. And I can accurately start some fires. Plenty of ammo to work around. Now, I just want to spread fire at this point, so we just want to rapidly hit like all the points. Come on, rapidly. You guys are rank 9, rank 10. Firing rate and reload rate should be way up now. Alright, flame is building. Is it a dry day? Yeah, it is. The so fire should be pretty easy. Is there any willing to duel? Oh, wow. Go get some experience. Alright, the cavalry is waiting for the infantry. Bad, bad, bad idea. Doesn't matter which one. Yuan Xi? Yuan Shao Sun. Oh, Yuan Shao Sun, you're in for a surprise here. Yeah, the fire got started a little bit later than what I want, but the archer should be able to help with starting fires. Well, they have to retreat through this forest. We'll get what we want. Let's boost ourselves. We also have this in case we go low health. Or probably not. Oh, archers are picking it up. Now they're really doomed. Maybe I should focus on the cavalry. I know what they're gonna do. No. Yeah, Wei needs to fight you to get out of the danger. Go from one duel to another. Alright, you two on him. You two on him. You two on him. Yeah, they're using smokescreen quite well to hide their units. But I'm sure close range flaming rock is gonna do them. Okay, I think they're mostly out of the forest, switch to regular arrows because it shoot way faster. Oh they're throwing traps on us. We're gonna we're gonna die. Plenty of them are gonna die from the traps. The traps actually really hurt. Alright, the cavalry have all been taken care of. Break formation so you can go a little faster. Still not done? Yuan Shao's sun's lasting quite long. I'm ignoring the... Oh, well, don't have to ignore the cavalry anymore. Go back, go back, go back, go back. She is going to rout before we get a chance to duel her again. Oh, she's out of control because the death of a friend. Or family or friend? Relative. Wait, who are you? His wife? I give... Oh, come on. Now you don't want to duel? Please duel. Ah, oh, she's now routing. Okay. All right, we'll take the win. So... Majority of our losses are just the enemy throwing cow traps on us, which kills us because they're lowest spikes on the ground. Um, but yeah, not bad. Alrighty, that's one Yuan Shao army down. Alright, we caught her. She doesn't want to work for us, so we'll just release her. Oh, rivals with Liu Bei. Maybe this is an execute. Everyone we know hates her. Or everyone we care about hates her. Like Xu Yu, Liu Bei, Guan Yu. Oh, I don't really care about her, but. Hmm. And we get an item. Alright, off you go. Alright, picked up some income. Uh, we can just delegate for the farmland, his army, he's running, he's running away from us. Hey, why don't we just take this, and then he's kind of stranded in our territory. 
Um, I don't trust the delegate value. I'll fight this and cut it out. It'd be rather quick. Uh, that way we minimize losses. See you guys at the end. All right, we fought a relatively clean fight. Lost six men. And we occupy. And we're gonna end our episode here as we are now at the Yellow River. We have pushed out Yuan Shao from over here. He still has an army that we had to take care of, uh, not a big deal. And then we also pushing Liu Dai to across the river, hopefully. We'll take Hu Lao Pass next uh, episode. We have gotten a new vassal, which we intend to keep for a little bit. Uh, we will annex Liu Bei as soon as those 10 turns are up. And we're also going to sell down the Yellow River to pick up Yuan Shu's territory, which is Luoyang, as well as Luoyang's trade port. And that's going to be our goal for our next part as we turn our eyes north. Gong Sun Zai has quite a bit of land in the north. That would be also a very lucrative annex. And uh, we'll basically squeeze out all these factions in the middle. It looks like Yuan Shao doesn't have much if Gong Sun Zai has this much. Especially over here is probably bandits, probably Zheng Jiang and Zhang Yan. And we'll fight them as well. And we'll also make a push for Dong Min uh, in the future. We're probably going to hit King very soon. Yeah, we're very close, 65 points. Um, as we conquer more settlements, we'll get those points. And once we become Emperor, we'll see the other two Emperor. I'm predicting Lady Wu will be one, and then the other person is probably Dong Min. And we have to go conquer both of them for the ultimate victory. But at this point, uh, we're doing fairly well. I think the second we annex Liu Bei, we'll become Emperor. Just because the land that he has will be given over to us, and two of them are level city settlement. This one's level 9. So lots of prestige. Um, we'll see you guys when that happens. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Until next time. Bye.